Amen, amen. I invite you to remain standing as you are able for the reading of God's holy word today as we uh, continue in our worship series, The Seven Last Words of Christ. Let us receive these words. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When we, he had said this, he breathed his last. May God add blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of this portion of God's holy word. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. It is, again, such a joy to be with you in worship today. Um, I am just so overwhelmed as we enter into this Holy Week, overwhelmed by community and by how wonderful it is to be together. Uh, last week, this was all on, last year, a year ago, this was all online, actually, for the past two years, um, as we were unable to be together, and we're just so incredibly thankful to be able to be together with one another in this time of worship today. I want to make you aware of an update to our paid in full Freed for New Life campaign. We, over the course of Lent as a church, have been seeking to be debt-free by Easter, so that as we celebrate new life and freed life in in resurrection, we as a church can be freed from debt and free to dream and imagine and live out whatever God has in store for us. And so we are continuing to bring in those donations. Um, we are about uh, we are over a third of the way there. We've taken in 100, a little over $135,000 out of the 317 that we are trying to collect. And so hope that in this last week, um, we are able to, to do that and to be debt-free by Easter. We're so excited about the possibilities that God has for us when we are freed uh, from debt that binds us. So again, thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this service of worship. I'm so excited to be with you. Let us turn to God in prayer. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm sure many of you have had the experience that I have had where you were in the process of doing something or in the process of watching something, a, a movie or reading something out of a book, and as the plot unfolds, or as blocks are stacked on top of each other, or as something is being done, you say, oh, this is not going to end very well. When I was babysitting for friends of mine, the little boys began to stack car upon car upon car. They were saying, how big can we make this pile of cars? And I just knew, I just knew this was not going to end well. And sure enough, as the older boy put a car on the top of that pile, they all came tumbling down onto the feet of his brother, who was not very excited about that at all. But we know, right? We know, we, we've seen in movies, we've read in books, and we know from our lives that there are some situations that as they unfold, you just know it's not going to end well. Today, we celebrate Palm Sunday. Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, we experienced a little bit of that here with our children and those young at heart leading us in a processional, just as Jesus would have processed through those streets of Jerusalem with people waving palm branches and shouting Hosanna, shouting hail to the Messiah just as we did. There was excitement and there was celebration and there were praises. And there were a lot of expectations on Jesus. A lot of expectations about what he would do as the one who was coming to save them. How exactly he would save them. There were a lot of expectations. And as we read the Bible, as we read Luke's telling of the gospel story, while we have these excited crowds welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem, we also have murmurings going on behind the scenes. 
If it was a movie, there would be haunting music <laughs> as certain persons gathered whispering behind closed doors about their plans to not let this excitement continue. We knew how this would end, with a cross. But Jesus knew how it would end too. He knew that the message that he preached of good news to the poor and recovery of sight to the blind, his healing powers that he brought upon people, whether or not society considered them worthy, the kingdom of God that he preached coming down to earth, that was not a very popular message for those in power. John the Baptist, his cousin, had preached a similar message before he was arrested and killed. At which point, Jesus took that baton and began his ministry. We knew how it would end. And yes, because Jesus willingly goes to the cross, there is something about that cross that is triumphant. There is something about that, as we talked about last week in worship, that, that the sacrifice of Jesus means means salvation, it means something transformative. But it's still awful, and it's still tragic, that cross on which he died. Luke tells us, as do Matthew and Mark, that as Jesus hung on the cross and died, that the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Now this curtain of the temple was humongous. It was gigantic and it was thick. It's not the kind of fabric that could just simply unravel with ease. But that curtain, that thick curtain in the house of the Lord that represented the presence of God there was torn in two as Jesus died. The tearing of fabric for the Jewish people was a sign of mourning, a sign of grieving, and so it's as if here in this moment, even though, yes, the cross is in some ways triumphant, God and all of creation are mourning and grieving as that curtain is torn in two. They're mourning and grieving Jesus who has died, and I believe mourning and grieving us as humans who are so very broken. Because though we belong to God, though we are created by and belong to God, we humans are always trying to take our lives out of God's hands and into our own. We're always trying to take control of everything, aren't we? How many self-help books have been written about how to get control of your own life? How many uh, visiting lecturers and teachers and preachers have talked about what it means to get control of your own life. And that's all well and good until it comes to things in our life that we cannot control. And then we are reminded, sometimes tragically, sometimes in grief, that as Will Willimon says, our lives are not ours to possess or to control to begin with. Our lives in their very selves are a gift that we receive from God. Jesus reminds us in these of his last seven words on the cross, last seven phrases there as he dies, he reminds us what it is to give our lives back fully to the one who gave life to us. What it means to commit ourselves to God in life and in death. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, he says. This comes from Psalm 31.5 that says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit and I ask for your faithfulness in saving me. It was a verse and a phrase that was taught to Jewish children throughout the centuries, much like 
Now I lay me down to sleep. How many of you all have prayed that before? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. It's a prayer that is a little dark, but it reminds us that our lives are God's. Similarly, this passage, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, was a prayer taught to Jewish children. And they would say it before they went to bed. Say it as they woke up in the morning. Say it as a reminder that their lives were God's and that God was one who received their lives in faithfulness and that God would save them and be with them. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus says. Mary taught Jesus to pray these words when he was little. And now he teaches us how to pray. He has taught his disciples how to pray the prayer that we pray each week in worship. Our Father who art in heaven, right? We pray that every week as a remembrance of what Jesus taught us. But here on the cross, he teaches us another prayer. He teaches us that in death and in despair, in grief and loss, in sorrow, in the worst that the world has, we are to pray into your hands, I commit my spirit. And in the worst of those times, God's hands are open for us. God receives us in those hands. And I don't know about you, but that brings me a lot of hope and a lot of comfort. I remember when I was little, and even as an adult, (laughs) singing the beloved song, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. A song of reassurance that we are held by one who is more powerful than we can ever imagine. The song, he's got the whole world in his hands, as beautiful as it is, was written in a not so beautiful time. It's an African-American spiritual written by one whose name we will never know because they were a person enslaved, a person whose life was not theirs to control in any way, shape, or form because they were living under this oppressive and sinful system of slavery. And yet, these words were sung and passed down and given as a means of reminding those who had no control, that while they didn't have control, neither did the oppressive powers that enslaved them. Neither did the government that called them less than human. Neither did those who beat them down. God had their lives in his hand. And in that, there was hope. There was resistance. There was comfort in the worst of times because they were held and their lives were committed to the one who created them. It's a beautiful thing to know that God's got us in the worst of circumstances. A few weeks ago, I attended a celebration of life service for a friend who was 26 years old and passed away from ovarian cancer. Kenzie Williams lived her life committed to God. I imagine her perhaps verbally, perhaps non-verbally, saying this prayer, into your hands I commit my spirit to God as she sought to be a loving, vibrant, joyous presence 
to all she encountered in her life, to make a difference in the world for justice, to make a difference in the world for the marginalized and the downtrodden, and committing herself to God not only in life, but in death as well. Kinsey wrote, I don't believe that God specifically plans every little thing in our lives, but I believe that he can bring us out of even the darkest places and he can make good come out of our troubles. Powerful, powerful words, especially from one who went through the darkest place but because of Christ, because the cross is not the end, because of the love of God that never fails, does come out of that dark place and into the power of resurrection. But what would it look like for us, all of us, to entrust our lives, the good, the bad, and the ugly, (laughs) into the hands of God? to commit our spirits to God who seeks to transform us into beings of compassion and justice and love? What does it mean to commit ourselves and all of our fears and anxiety into hands that yearn to hold us and lift us up? I believe that God's hands, when they hold us, they empower us to do that which Christ calls us to do, to commit ourselves to God's hands, yes, but also to God's healing in the world, to God's redemption, to God's love, and to God's power of transformation. This week on this holy week, I hope that we can pray this prayer this prayer that children like Jesus were taught growing up. Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. And that in praying this prayer, we can experience all the more the power of God's love, the power of God who holds us fast, the power of God who transforms our broken and hurting and cancerous world. I want to invite you today to pray with me. So I want to invite you to, to take your hands and cup them. Cup them in front of you. You can put your, put your feet on the ground and cup those hands. Think about holding something precious in these hands that you don't want to drop. And know that that's the way that God holds you. That you are something precious. I want to invite you to bow your heads and take a deep breath. And you can repeat after me loudly, quietly, under your voice, under your breath, as we pray. Loving God, you have the whole world in your hands. Hold us with love, even when we are mean. Hold us with care when we are breaking. Hold us and help us to help your world as into your hands we commit our spirits. Amen.